Let's talk about air cooling. I've gone the opposite way. I started first with water cooling and now I'm working my way back and trying some air cooling. So I got this Noctua cooler. People say it's really good. So let's find out. Let's see what I think. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Thank you for joining me for another video. Please subscribe if you like my content, smash that like button, leave a comment below. Do you use an air cooler or water cooler or even an AIO? So today, let's talk about this Noctua air cooler. Now, people recommend this one every single time. Anytime you look at any reviews online or you talk to other people who build computers, this Noctua air cooler, it's definitely very popular. There are a couple of other ones as well, like the Be Quiet series and things of that nature, but definitely Noctua is known for having some of the best fans and build quality around. So after I've had my fill of sort of water cooling computers, which it's definitely my favorite, I think aesthetically and performance wise, it's really the best you can do. I was curious, what am I missing out on by not doing air cooling? Am I missing out on any type of aesthetics or am I missing out on any type of noise performance or anything of that nature? Let's compare it with my experience on water cooling and we'll divide it up in three different sections. The first one, of course, let's talk about performance and how much of a difference are you actually giving up by doing air cooling. Number two, let's talk about the price and those type of considerations when building a system with air cooling. And then third, let's talk about the aesthetics and how this is going to affect the look of your build. So first, let's talk about performance. And now this is a little bit tricky because if you were comparing this air cooler to just a single AIO, you can really quantify the difference in numbers. For example, um, let's say if in Prime 95 you're doing like a stress test on your CPU, let's say if this one gets it up to 80C and you have like a Corsair 120 millimeter or even a 240 millimeter AIO, you may be able to see that that's gonna be a couple of C cooler. Maybe it's getting like 75 or 76 see just hypothetical numbers it's easy to sort of quantify it but when we're talking about water cooling there are so many variations on the type of radiators that you get the size the thickness the type of pump that you're using the type of fans that you're using to cool it that you would never really be able to get too close of a comparison and right off the bat in terms of performance it's almost impossible to compare them because yes, of course, a water-cooled setup is almost always gonna perform better. We just have to find the balance of the price, aesthetics, and exactly how much you're willing to put into this. So a better question to ask is, is the performance for an air cooler acceptable enough for high-end hardware that you don't have to go to water cooling just for performance? Let's save the question about aesthetics aside. Let's say if you just want your hardware competently cooled where it's gonna perform well, you'll be able to overclock. Can you do it with something like this? Well, I think you can. It has a 250 watt TDP, which is gonna cover most processors on the market, especially even high-end ones. Now, are you gonna get the best cooling performance compared to an open loop? Of course not. An open loop, you can keep adding on to it, have massive radiators. Even a smaller open loop should be able to at least match or beat this. But what you're getting here is really getting a nice, quiet performance. Now, I decided to go with this Noctua cooler. Originally, this is the single version that just comes with one of the 140 millimeter fans. But being the performance enthusiast that I am, I decided to add that second fan, which they provide a clip for you in the box. So I thought that was pretty easy to do. Um, I did get a little bit better cooling performance. And overall, I find that the more fans that I add, and this is gonna apply to water cooling as well, the more fans that I add to a system, you would think it's noisier, but it's the opposite. It's gonna be quieter because you can run four fans at maybe half the speed. If you had two fans, you're gonna have to run them a little bit louder to get that same performance, especially when you're spreading them out with a water cooling radiator. In this case, having that second fan is gonna help sort of dissipate the heat and move the air out of the case a lot better through the CPU cooler. So right now I have this set up to an actual Intel system. It's an X299, a 10 core processor. Um, yeah, it's, it's cooling it pretty good. I must say I'm pretty happy. I actually have the same processor on a water cooled system and I was only getting maybe four to five degrees Celsius cooler on the water cooling setup. And that one has, you know, massive 480 millimeter radiators. So under similar conditions, this one, while it's not the same, I did notice that it performs pretty well. Like I, if I didn't know about the water cooling setup, I'd be completely happy with this. So just as a general question, without having to sort of analyze the numbers, 
would this be enough to cool something like a, like a 10 core HEDT processor or even a 9900K or maybe even a Ryzen 3900X? I think so, definitely. So for the second consideration that we have to talk about here is that while yes, water cooling will in general perform better than an air cooler like this if you're really talking about the numbers, but the price is a tremendous difference. Like you can pick one of these up even with both fans for $100 or less. You're never gonna get anywhere close to a custom water cooled setup like this. Even an AIO cooler that's gonna match the performance of this, it's gonna run at least this price, but most likely it's gonna run significantly more going well into the $120, $150 range. But definitely an open loop, you're never gonna get it this close. Cause in open loop, you're gonna need your pump, you need a radiator, you need fans for those radiators. You're gonna need your tube and your fittings. It's a whole different category. It's such a massive difference that I really don't think you can even compare them on the basis of price. Is the performance acceptable for what it is? And I thought it's much more than acceptable. It's actually quite excellent performance considering the package that you're getting. And considering the price that you're getting, it really is a lot of performance. Like you're gonna literally spend hundreds of dollars, maybe even a thousand dollars or more on a really complicated open loop system to get, yes, better performance, but is it gonna be 50 degrees better? Are you going like sub-zero temperatures? Of course not. You're gonna get cooler performance. In general, your components are gonna be able to overclock more. Um, and you can also keep noise very low in a water-cooled system. I know that air-cooled systems are famous for having low noise, but if you have a proper water cooling setup with low RPM fans and the proper density radiators to go with those fans, and maybe a D5 pump, you can keep that system almost silent while getting really fantastic performance. Not to mention that we're only talking about CPU cooling here. In the water-cooled setup, you can throw your GPU on there, and the GPU, in my opinion, is where it really gets interesting for water cooling. The CPU, as you can see, you can throw an air cooler and it does the job fine. But the GPU is where you get massive gains. You're gonna go from like a 84C Founders Edition uh, GPU to maybe as low as like 42C or something like that, depending on the water cooling system. But if you're focusing just on your CPU for now, the price difference is tremendous. The only reason you would go for water cooling really at this point is if we talk about our third category, which is gonna be the aesthetics. Now, this one's also a little bit of a toss up. I'll say it right off the bat. As much as the ultimate gaming computer, I feel is a water cooled system because you can do so many bends and runs with liquid and different colors. I mean, the aesthetic game that you're gonna have doing an open loop system is absolutely tremendous. Like your creativity potential is absolutely through the roof. Uh, once again, in this category, just like the second one, there was no price comparison we could really do. In this one, there's not as much of an aesthetic comparison because they're so different, but I am going to say that I absolutely love the way that air coolers look, especially this Nostra. As you can see, I have it behind me here, and it looks so like industrial and, and just so awesome. While yes, an open custom loop is going to give you so many more avenues for creativity and be able to make an absolutely like jaw-dropping system, but you can create a very, very impressive system with this air cooler as well, because the aesthetic of it, it's such an imposing design. Um, some of the other air coolers are as well, but I think Noctua even more, especially with these brown colored fans, they just give it such a, a unique character that you know this system means business and means performance. In fact, I put this in the system here because I use this to edit. This is like my serious sort of workstation. Um, I do some gaming on it too, but I, I try to keep it I try to do gaming on my other computers where it's full of RGB and water cooling. This one is sort of my serious computer and I think the Noctua cooler really gives you that sort of serious vibe. You can get a serious vibe with water cooling too, but I think sometimes this does a better job, especially if you consider how close the performance is and how good the price is in comparison. So in conclusion, and this was by no means, you know, comparing necessarily an air cooler to a water cooling, saying that you should be deciding between both. They both have their purpose and they're both vastly different first in price. Um, second in the aesthetics, they look very different. It's gonna depend what you want. Um, performance, they're not as different as the other two categories. Like you can get very respectable noise and thermal performance with an air cooler like this, considering its price, that doing an open loop system is really gonna come into play 
when you want the aesthetics to really, really pop and be a completely different type of system with your, you know, your loop running and RGB. But in terms of the price to performance, I think the air cooler kind of wins out in this case because for a hundred bucks, you're going to be cooling your CPU pretty much only a few degrees less than even a nice water cooled system. Of course, this isn't taking into account water cooling your GPU. Water cooling the GPU is really where it's at. Um, in my opinion, that's where you're going to get your most gains. But if you're just doing your CPU, and your budget only allows for an air cooler like this, I wouldn't worry at all. It's quite impressive for what it can do for such a small package. Should you do an AIO instead of an air cooler? Well, an AIO is going to take up a little bit more room in terms of radiator space. While this takes up more room around your RAM area, you just have to make sure you have the proper clearance. Some AIOs will perform better than this, especially the ones with more fans and bigger radiator space. So it really depends on your aesthetic as well. But as long as you're getting something good, I think most of them should be able to cool these CPUs. Um, now, would I throw this on anything more? More than the 10 core processor that I have it on now. Uh, maybe not as we get to like a 14 core or an 18 core or even some of the new Threadripper processors. I would just feel more comfortable having a water loop on it because the thermal headroom that you need is going to be substantially more than something like this is going to put out. So that's the only consideration as well. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed my video. Subscribe if you enjoy my content. Leave a comment below. Are you using an air cooler or an AIO or water cooling? And I'll see you guys on the next video.